session is called uh, Perfecting Your Pitch. So this is a little bit about me. And those of you who have attended my, my sessions in the past, you know that this is my favorite photo. And this is my favorite photo because, um, you know, my hair is in my face and I'm, I'm happy uh, about that. And I'm happy about that because it um, reminds me to remind all of you that there is joy in perfection, right? We don't have to have everything completely buttoned up and, and perfect as we are going through and growing our businesses. And for a lot of us, uh, sometimes perfection is what stops us from scaling or stops us from, from innovating. Um, and so, you know, the story behind this picture is it was taken at a professional headshot session and um, the first part of the session, you know, I had hair and makeup done and then, uh, you know, the very uh, traditional uh, poses for a professional headshot where I was looking straight into the camera, I was smiling, but not too broadly, you know, that sort of thing. And at the end, the photographer, a lovely woman named April Peebles, um, April said, are you okay with uh, having some fun? And I said, yes, absolutely. And so her assistant got on the floor in front of me. She put me in this beautiful tulle skirt that she had in, in her studio. She changed the music and she said, okay, just start dancing and have fun. And the shot before this one, my hair is perfectly in place. The shot after this one, my hair again, perfectly in place. And when um, I selected this as you know the 10 in the package that I had paid for, April uh, contacted me and she said, I almost didn't put that picture in because it's not perfect. And I said, well, that's why I love this picture is because it's not perfect. And it reminds me to tell uh, all of all of my my listeners and um, you know people who 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 see me out and about that yeah we can have fun even with your hair in your face right okay so I'm an author I'm a coach I'm a guide I'm a speaker and I think most of all I'm an advocate right so uh, we represent a national organization that certifies women-owned businesses and we advocate on behalf of those women-owned businesses so that they have equal opportunity to access um, contracts and uh, relationship building with our corporate partners, both here uh, locally, regionally, and, and nationally. All right, so let me move uh, to the next slide. So in the chat, go ahead and, and, and say hello. Tell everyone who, uh, who you are, where you're attending from. Um, and then just a little bit about your business. It's always a really good idea to put your LinkedIn um, a contact when you're in a session like this, because you can connect directly with people. Um, and uh, most people just say hello from Florida or hello from, you know, South Beach or Miami or wherever, wherever they're, they're at. But it's, it's a good idea for you to go one bit further and actually put in your, your, your LinkedIn contact, your Instagram, all of your social media, because, you know, we all have our preferences, um, but it's a it's a great way to make a connection with some new people. Okay, um, I've even seen people, um, and this is as an aside. I've even seen people in the chat say, um, "I provide X Y Z, and I'm looking for A B C." Okay, and there you can make connections that way too. All right. Um, so uh, this is one of my favorite quotes. Um, Luck is, is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. And the philosopher Seneca is really um, known as the person who, who said this first, but Oprah really popularized it, right? Um, because a lot of people, uh, as she was, um, you know, her TV show and gaining in fame and, and uh, people would say, oh, you're so lucky. And she said, well, no, I'm, yes, I am lucky, um, but I also know how to take advantage of being in the right place at the right time, right? So um, again, the, the We Innovation pitch is coming up. The, the applications are open on Wednesday uh, of uh, this week, right? And um, we're encouraging you to do a video, a 90 second pitch, 
you, the business owner, not your sales rep or, you know, somebody else, it has to be you. Um, and it's very easy to do. You just do a video on your phone um, and upload it and we'll have the information uh, out to you. We've been publicizing this. It's on our website um, and we'll have some links for you um, in order to prepare that. The, the applications are open for about two weeks. So don't feel like you have to have everything all buttoned up by, by Wednesday, you still have some time. And at the end of this presentation, I'm gonna tell you about how we might be able to help you a bit further. All right. um, here's what we're gonna to cover today. Uh, we're gonna to talk about the elements of a great pitch, how to present the pitch, and then the follow-up, which is almost as important as the presentation. So part one, the elements of a great pitch. So you all probably recognize this, this cast of characters here, right? So we have um, from left to right, we have Mark Cuban, Barbara Corcoran, Damon John, Mr. Wonderful, Kevin O'Leary, Lori Grenier, and Robert uh, Herjavec. And if you, like me, are a fan of Shark Tank, um, you know that each of these people, their personalities are very distinct and what they like to invest in is also very distinct, right? Um, I love watching this show because they're, um, you know, it's TV, it's drama, but there's, I always learn something um, as I'm seeing the interaction between the, the investors as well as with the people uh, who are presenting. And every once in a while, they'll say, wow, what a great pitch. And um, those are the ones that stand out, right? And it usually has to do with the person's personality. They let their personality shine as they're pitching to the investors. And I'm gonna encourage you to do the, the, the very same thing. Right, so the six elements of a, of a great pitch, uh, where, what, when, why, how, and who, um, it doesn't really matter in what order you put these things, but we want you, I'm going to encourage you to have something related to each of these six elements in your pitch. And um, also, as a reminder, you don't have to have just the one pitch. You, the, the core elements of your pitch are going to be the same, but depending on who you're speaking with, you may emphasize where your product is going to be sold or your service. You may emphasize who, uh, you know, each one of these differently, right? It's kind of like your capabilities statements. You don't have to have just the one. Create a capabilities statement to uh, match the, your, your audience. Um, so the same with, with this. So who? Um, who are you? Right? This is the section where you're going to be talking about who, who you are, um, and you're going to be highlighting your expertise because that's going to build credibility and trust. Um, and I'm pretty sure that no one on this call needs to be reminded of this, but you never know. Um, I will remind you anyway. Uh, go ahead and talk about your expertise and your credentials. I can't tell you how many times I hear someone's pitch and the person never mentioned that her business is 25 years old and over 3 million in revenue. You have to say that, okay? That's not bragging. Um, that is truth telling and that is setting yourself up as, as an expert. You wanna talk about your, your interest in this particular product or service, right? And then let your passion show. As I just said, when we hear from, from the Shark Tank people, what a great pitch, it's because the person was authentic and they let their passion show. Every once in a while, we'll see tears on, on Shark Tank. I do not recommend tears when you're presenting a pitch to investors, especially as women. Um, that's really frowned upon, <coughs> excuse me, and, and it's interpreted as your lacking of confidence. So don't shed a tear. If you can't tell a story without shedding tears, don't tell that story, right? But we, you really do want for, for your, your passion and your, your authenticity to, to shine. 
Next, what? Uh, you have to talk about the product, right? What is it about this particular product? What is it about this particular service that is going to be helpful to the people that, that, that you're pitching to? And um, is it uh, innovative? And in, in our instance for this innovation pitch, they really want this to be an, an, an innovative product or service. Um, how is your product or service different? And I um, always want to, to remind you that our corporate partners tell us that there are really five things they are looking at when they're judging um, or deciding to, to uh, take up a, a, a bid or um, offer an opportunity, excuse me, to um, a, a vendor. One is safety. All corporations are really interested in safety. So if you can speak to how your product or service is going to improve safety uh, within that, that company, corporation, they're going to be interested. A second is training. They're always looking on how to better train their, their employees and um, even their vendors, right? The third thing is sustainability. Everyone is interested in sustainability um, and they want to know how your product or service is going to help them reach their sustainability goals. Efficiency is a, a fourth thing. Um, how is what you're offering going to make their people more efficient, more productive, right? Um, and you have to know those numbers uh, really well as you're presenting uh, your pitch. And then finally, it's cost savings. So our corporate partners have told us time and time again, they don't go with the cheapest uh, price. It's a good thing if the price is less expensive than more expensive, but that's not really the deciding factor. All of these other things, they take into consideration as well. Uh, the third element is where. So you want to speak to the geographic location. Right? Are you based in Miami, but your scope is national or international? Are you a brick and mortar operation, right? Um, or are you online? And hint, hint, all businesses should say they're, they, they're online businesses, right? Um, with the, the way the economy is with global trade, with the corporations, that you're presenting to our global corporations, they really want to know that you have uh, an online reach and um, uh, online uh, capacity, right? Um, every business is an online business. Uh, the fourth element is uh, about when. So this is when did you get started, okay? And here again, it speaks to your expertise, it speaks to your credibility, if you just started, good for you. Don't let that um, keep you from, from pitching. Um, you can then state why you just started this business. You worked for a corporation, you saw this great need that was not being met and you decided to uh, open up a business that's going to meet this need. Uh, as far as innovation is concerned, you pivoted through the, the, the pandemic and saw that here is what you're able to provide now. So always talk about when you got started. Uh, when is also about when you're ready to, to go. Is this an existing product? Is this a new product, an existing service, a new service? When would you be ready to launch? right? Because the investors are going to want to, to know that. Um, and then if you're at the pre-launch stage, don't worry about it. As far as investors are concerned, what they're concerned about here is, you know, did you do a GoFundMe campaign? I mean, uh, on Shark Tank, they always ask about that, right? What are, who are the other investors and what stake do they have? Um, for the pitch competition, the, the We Innovate pitch competition, um, you have to already have the product or service, okay? They're not looking for pre-launch. It has to be an existing product or service, right? The fifth element is how. Um, how are you going to deliver this, 
right? Um, how are you going to make them rich? How are you going to pay them back? Um, how are you going to make their investment grow? So all of that falls under the, the, the how category. Um, you remember uh, Mr. Wonderful um, sometimes says to, to the participants on, on Shark Tank, you don't have a business, you have a hobby, right? And he says that because they're not able to articulate how they're going to use the money to the investment to grow and to make them money too, because ultimately most investors are in it to make some money. Um, there, there are all, all kinds of categories of investors, but as a general rule, an investor, unless they're your family or friend, they're really looking for some kind of a return on their, on their investment. Okay, so I love this quote from, from Albert Einstein. If you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. Um, so I'm often asked, you know, how much do I have to dumb the presentation down, especially if I have a very technical um, uh, product or service that, that, that I'm presenting? Well, you have to know your audience, right? So sometimes you have to speak in a way that um, is general and other times you, you can go into the jargon and, and the more specifics. And um, by way of example, if you're at a matchmaker meeting, um, and WeBank does lots of matchmaker meetings, as does Go for the Greens, and, and, and we help to promote matchmaker meetings because um, it's a really great way for you to build a relationship with a corporate uh, representative, right? The best thing or the thing you should know is who you're speaking to. So in a matchmaker setting, if you're speaking to the head of supplier diversity, someone who's on the supplier diversity team, you should speak in very broad language. Their job is to make sure that when bids and opportunities go out from the procurement team, that everyone is invited to bid. So uh, if you have a very technical uh, uh, product or service, the supplier diversity manager, that's not their, their field of interest. That's procurement. Procurement is very specified or specific. So they buy this or that. You can speak in the industry jargon to the procurement officer, speak in more general terms to the supplier diversity team member. You can tell them my product or service is generally bought by blank in procurement, okay? You can offer that as, um, as examples, but again, keep your, your presentations more broad than not, uh, but do your homework to know who you're speaking to. All right, and then finally, number six is why. Why should they invest in you? And, and why are you looking for them? So again, homework is key. Um, and in your homework, you want to be able to say, um, in your presentation, rather, you want to be able to say, I I've, I've done my research and I know that Office Depot buys XYZ, or I know that Brassfield and Gorey is looking for this, and my company can provide that. So, so you really have to know your audience and speak specifically to why what you're presenting and offering is important to them, okay? And why they should choose to work with you as opposed to, you know, the hundreds or thousands of other vendors out there. Um, so this is really, really key. Okay, so back to our, our, our group here again. Um, and you probably know that Lori Grenier is with, um, you know, QVC, right? And She's looking for products that, that can be presented on that show that she can sell really quickly. Mr. Wonderful, Kevin O'Leary, is looking for licensing deals, right? He is most interested in royalties and licensing. Damon um, is, is clothing, right? And th those kinds of lines. Um, Barbara Corcoran, her background is in, in real estate, but she's done really well 
with food products, right? And then um, Mark Cuban is, is all about sports and sports management and opportunities for, for teams. And then Robert is technology, right? He, he, his business is technology and security. And um, if you have something uh, related to that, he generally is interested, but he's also into extreme sports, right? So if you've got a product that's, that's related to extreme sports, Robert is, is your person. So knowing your audience is really going to, to, to help you to speak specifically to them as you're pitching the, the, the products, right? So our audience, um, and I'm gonna ask my team if they'll put the name of the, you know, the companies, the, the judges that we have, that's our audience. And so you want to do research on those five companies um, and see how does your product or service fit into their particular needs. Um, if um, you know anything about me, you know that I'm a reader and I'm always suggesting books. These are two really great books, same author, Simon Sinek. Um, and these will help you with your why. It, it'll help you explain as you read these books. He's got tons of examples of why it's important to start with why, right? Um, and uh, why it's important to really know why you're doing something and why someone might care why you're doing or providing a product or service. All right. So I'm going to pause here. I can't see the chat when I'm in presentation mode. But I'm going to ask um, if uh, if there are any um, you know what questions you might have, or if there if there's anything in the chat that I should know about. Uh, Nancy, I didn't see anything yet, but I did want you to just um, I think reiterate again uh, about the idea that because we have a couple people here that have patents and things, so. You know, this is something that you are about to launch, right? Or has already launched for the competition coming up? Yeah, has has already launched is is what we've been told. Um, yeah. They they're looking for innovative products or services already in existence. Perfect. And uh, but congratulations to uh, some of the creative um, women uh, business owners we have as part of our community. We. Are super excited about your new products and um and again just make sure as uh you have questions or thoughts come up to so please drop them in um i will also say nancy i know if, if, and you think you're about to get into that with the presenting here you know talking about the timing because i know that's always everyone's question is how do you get all this in in a short amount of time <laughs> right yeah yeah we're gonna we're gonna be talking about that and then um, our team too is really, really great at listening to your 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 pitch and help, helping you to tighten it up um, so that you know you're meeting the needs of, of of your audience. Okay, so we'll get into part two, which is all about presenting the pitch. Um, the most important thing in communication is hearing what isn't said. And um, this is all about, you know, listening and uh, really body language, right? Um, you want to make sure that you look confident and that you don't look nervous. And, and I know for a lot of people, a lot of us, it's really, really important or, or difficult, right? Um, we're not used to uh, speaking to the camera because with these 90 second pitches, that's what you're going to be doing is speaking directly to the camera and presenting um, I do a lot of speaking um, and I do a lot of these kinds of Zoom calls where I feel like I'm speaking into a black hole because I can't see everybody and I can't see the chat. So um, it takes a little bit of getting used to and, and remembering to look at the camera. It, you know, it's practice, right? So you, you just have to uh, say that you want to do this, commit to learning and practice. All right, so presenting your elevator pitch. Here, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, getting ready to prepare. We're going to talk about uh, body language and practice. So the details we talked about, the who, where, what, when, why, and how. And remember, again, these are not in any particular order, but you do have to touch on each of these. 
Um, and I have worked with uh, with uh, our members, some of our members who, you know, we just tweaked, they had a perfect pitch, but it was more powerful if they started with the why, or it was more powerful if they started with the how or the who. So we can help you with that, right? Um, and sometimes all it takes is just a different way to start or a different story to tell or a different ending. Um, and the, you know, the beauty of our iPhones, our phones, is that we can record these things, right? And you can video yourself uh, making the presentation and just try out the, the different openings or, or, or closings to see which is more, more powerful. Next, your body language, right? So Christopher Voss is a, is a master negotiator. He's actually a, 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 an international hostage negotiator. Um, but he says body language and tone of voice, not words, are our most powerful assessment tools. And you have probably um, sat in an audience where the presenter was nervous and you were unsettled because the presenter was nervous, right? So I've sat in audiences where the person doesn't seem confident and you know they're fidgeting, they're moving around, um, imagine that you have a big X on the stage or where you're, you're presenting and you don't want to move too far away from, from that space, right? I would say two, three feet either, either way in front and back and to either side of you is an appropriate amount of space. And two or three feet, that's not a, a, a big space. It's actually like your arm span, right? <laughs> is two or three feet. Um, you also, if you're making a presentation um, where the people are sitting in front of you, um, try not to use a podium because that sets a barrier. And when you have a podium, a lot of people tend to have like a death grip on this podium when they are nervous. Uh, so you want to, to practice walking a little bit, taking a step here, taking a step back. Um, and, and generally, if you move forward, if you take a step forward, that's inviting the audience to come in with you, right? And to think future. If you take a step back, that's inviting the audience to think of, you know, this is how things were in the past. Here is my innovation. Here is what, what I am presenting to you. So be, be really, um, uh, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Be, be intentional about your body language. And uh, the best way to monitor that is to videotape yourself, right? Or stand in front of your mirror. Um, even if you're standing in front of your mirror, it's not as effective as if you videotape yourself because then you can actually go back and pause and see, okay, this worked, that didn't work, et cetera. Okay, so body language is really important. And then next is practice. Uh, you don't get to be a great speaker without practicing. Um, I uh, took a, uh, I worked with a coach, actually, Andy Henriquez. Um, I really recommend him. He's called the Master Storyteller. And um, I participated uh, in a coaching program that, that he had. He has boot camps and then he has coaching programs. And, um, you know, one of the best things you can do is have two or three key stories, right? And then you use those stories throughout your presentations. And um, Andy says every point has to have a story and every story has to have a point. The same when you're pitching, right? You want to say why this was important to you, why you created this product or service, and add because. I did this because. Don't just assume that people are going to um, understand, right? Um, you have to be really intentional and really specific about the who, the what, the where, the why, the how, the when. It all happened because. Um, and as a result of this, I did that, right? Um, practicing is really, really important. The more you practice, the better. Um, you can actually memorize a pitch, but don't stand up there and make it sound like you memorized it, right? So um because that's not authentic it's going to be seen as you're not confident 
that you had to memorize this pitch if it sounds like it was memorized. Um, you can work on a pitch such that it comes out more conversational um, with your body language, right? You move forward, you move back, you use your hands, you open your eyes really wide, you pause. All of that is part of the, 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 the presentation. And the, the more authentic that is, the better for you to create a really good relationship. Um, I'm also going to remind you that when women speak in public and are nervous, our voice pitches higher than what most men are comfortable with, okay? And re there's been a ton of research done on this. It is to your benefit for you to speak more slowly if you're nervous and to take deeper breaths um, because that will lower the pitch of your voice, okay? So you want to... Um, uh, again, pause, speak more slowly, and be really, really careful that you're not trying to put every bit of information about your company into this pitch, because 90 seconds, you cannot do that, right? Choose one or two things to highlight. Give the investors, give the judges, give the audience something to think about, so they will go back and do more research on you. Okay, so be, be really careful about um, your, your body language and especially the, the, the pitch of your, your voice, right? And practice is what's gonna help you with that. Um, okay, so part three is follow-up. So a lot of people don't realize that you can always ask for feedback. Um, and the key to asking for feedback is to do that rather quickly. Right. So in the cases of our regional competition, um, I'm telling you my team and I will give you feedback. Right. If you contact us and uh, you say that, that you want to participate in this pitch competition and you have a pitch, we will sit with you and offer you some feedback. Um, and we hope that you will take that feedback in the spirit in which it was intended. It's not criticism. It's here based on the benefit of our many years of experience listening to pitches, uh, working with corporates. Here are some ideas of how you might say something a little bit differently, right? Um, and that information is yours to keep or give away, right? But we're here to, to, to help. Um, and then with the corporate partners, very, very often, um, they will say they're interested in helping, right? And they will put their contact information. So if you are at a matchmaker setting, in a matchmaker setting, and you make a presentation, um, you can always ask the person there, uh, uh, what resonated with you? What could I have done better? Um, and always start by saying, I really want to work with, with your company because we share the same values. I know I have products or services that can help you in safety and sustainability and training and efficiency and all of that. How can I um, present in a way that highlights what it is better that, that, that I can offer you? Okay. Also be prepared to receive the feedback. It may be difficult for, for you to hear that the pitch didn't resonate, that you missed the mark, but um, it's really, really important to, to hear the feedback. And I'm bringing my, my, my Shark Tank team back again, because you can probably all know, if you watch this show, you know who has the most vicious feedback, right? It's Mr. Wonderful. Um, he talks about taking your business you know, out in, in the backyard and shooting it. He talks about being a cockroach that he's going to squish under his foot. It's all drama. It's all TV. But sometimes that's how the, the investors really feel. Okay. And better to know that your product or service, your presentation didn't land with someone. It may be just a personality thing. It may be, um, you know, not the right time. Always keep in mind, 
you have the ability um, and I say the responsibility to work with people who are going to work with you, right? You don't have to keep knocking on someone's door if they're not interested in working with you. Move on, work with someone else, make a presentation to someone else, and then you can go back again when you have a bit more experience, when you have something that you think that um, Mr. Wonderful is really going to be interested in. <clears throat> Excuse me, you can go back at that point. But there's no need because one person says they're not interested. It doesn't mean you have to convert that one person. Just move on. All right. Um, I love this word blessings. Um, I wish I had coined it, but I did not. It was coined by a woman named Karen Salmonson. Um, and it's a combination of blessings and lessons. So blessings are the blessings in the lessons, right? Sometimes. Um, it's best not to get that contract or opportunity, right? Um, it's always a good idea for you to look to see what are the lessons that you learned in XYZ. So you, you, you pitch your product or service. It does not land well. Rather, you know, and you can go lick your wounds for a little bit and have a pity party for a little bit. But really, what is the lesson there? Why did it not land well? Is it the product? Is it the way you presented it? Is it the timing? All of that is really going to inform you and you can really learn uh, from uh, every experience. All right, you wanna make adjustments, right? Um, and the thing about making adjustments is you have to start somewhere. Um, I worked with a coach, a, a lovely woman named Michelle Villalobos for a number of years. And Michelle used to say, um, you can't move, a, you can't turn a, a parked car, right? So you have to, have, the car has to be moving in order for you to turn to the right or turn to the left or decide to go forward or maybe backwards, right? Um, you have to take some, some action. Uh, let's see. And again, just a, a, a reminder, um, to, to look for help, right? Everyone is willing to, to, to help. Um, be really mindful of who you're seeking that help from, right? Um, because there are people in our lives, regrettably, who don't want to see us advance because they're comfortable with the way things are now, right? So it's always good to have a third party, someone who doesn't really know your industry or doesn't really know your product, pitch to them and see their reaction. And then you can make adjustments um, one way or the other. Because again, remember that, that quote, if you can't explain it in a simple way, you don't really know the product or service. All right, All right and then finally, I, I wanna add here, um, these are just different types of pitch competitions, and I found all of these on, online. So you can have, you know, there's student and university competitions, location-based competitions, company started, uh, company sponsored competitions, conference-based competitions, um, and then here's a source, uh, you know, some really great, great tips on um, how to uh, win a startup pitch competition, right? So there's lots of information out there. Uh, Google can provide you with, with lots of tools and checklists and opportunities. The more you do this, the better, right? Um, you can look for groups of female investors, angel investors, um, and you can start pitching to, to them. Um, and then, as I said, you can always pitch to, to, to us and we'll be able to help you. So um, we're coming, it's, it's about a quarter of, and I just want to remind you what we covered today. And again, if you want these slides, let us, let us know and we're, we're happy to send them to you. So we talked about the elements of, of a great pitch, the who, the what, the where, when, why, and how. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be in any particular order kind of play around with those to see what, what sounds better for your particular pitch um, audience. Uh, we talked about presenting the pitch, right? And, and the importance of practicing. 
Um, and, and again, knowing your audience in, in a matchmaker setting, are you speaking to the supplier diversity team or are you speaking to the procurement officer? And you can always ask, you'll always know who you're meeting with and then just do some research on them. And then the follow-up after the pitch, right? Um, be open and accepting of the praise as well as um, the, the areas where you can uh, do some improvement. Okay, um, I found this just this morning on, on Facebook and I thought it was really uh, timely and a really good reminder. So if anxiety creeps in, remember that feelings aren't facts. If imposter syndrome crashes the party, remember that you can do it scared. If perfectionism pulls up, remember that done is better than perfect. Um, and I leave you with, with those thoughts that you can do this, right? It, it may not be perfect the first time you uh, enter a pitch competition or, or pitch your product or service. It may not be perfect, but practice, practice. And your conviction and your authenticity will do a lot to help someone see past your being nervous, right? Um, so always be, be authentic. Um, and then just a little bit about who we are and what we do with, at, at the WBDC Florida. So we have three banners. The growth shift is all about um, growing and shifting your business, scaling your business. The Nancy G. Allen banner is all about mindset and attitude and, and you as the CEO, how you can better yourself so that you can support your uh, business. And then We Beck Florida is all about certification. So if there's anybody out there who is not certified and wants to uh, be considered um, as a woman-owned business through a third-party certifier, the Women's Business Enterprise National Council, um, let us know, and, and we're, we're happy to, to help you through that, that process, right? Um, so our programs and our, our promise, it, again, we do certification um, through WeBank. We do lots of business development. We have lots of business development tools through the growth shift. Um, and we, you know, we can help you connect with some incredible regional and national and international corporations that are looking to do business with women-owned companies. We do educational workshops and we do one-on-one -on -one coaching and group coaching. Um, and we are happy, happy to, to, to help, All right? Um, and this quote by Eleanor Roosevelt, it takes as much energy to wish as it does to plan. Don't just wish you could participate in a, a pitch competition. Actually plan how you're going to do that, right? And we've got some resources on our website. And, and, um, and again, we're, we're happy to, to connect with you. <laughs>